UCLA will the seniors at Ford, Vandaway and Wilkes, the freshmen at guards, and the center 6'6 Sanders. Louisville with the All-American 35, Griffith and Eves in the backcourt. Brown and Smith are sophomores at Ford, and a freshman McRae at center. UCLA games the tap. Holton, a freshman, this is Wilkes, a senior. Sanders, just a sophomore. Foster, sharp shooting freshman. Vandaway, the senior and leading scorer. There's the key matchup. Wiley Brown on Vanderway. Has McCray on Wilkes. Inside is Sanders. Can't hit it. And it's out of bounds to UCLA. Wiley Brown, number 41, touched it last for Louisville. Sanders pulled up on that shot. He didn't follow through. He thought he was going to be fouled. You see the youth on both sides. There's not a junior in the starting lineup. Two seniors start for UCLA and one senior, Daryl Griffith, for Louisville. 2-1-2 zone now by Louisville on the out-of-bounds situation with Wiley Brown right in the center. Rod Foster, the freshman, can't hit it. Rebound, Derek Smith. Here come the Cardinals of Louisville. Jerry Eves, a sophomore at 6-4. The All-American Griffith. Great pass inside. Wiley Brown. Louisville leads it 2 nothing. I didn't think that was good shot selection even though it went in. There's that full court zone press now by Louisville, trying to force the ball down the right-hand side of the court. This Louisville team is not unlike the first UCLA team to win the national championship, when John Wood had a 6-5 center and pressed the opposition full court. Inside Sanders from 15, short again. Daryl Griffith with a rebound, and Derek Smith. He'll shoot it. Rebound Sanders, the leading rebounder in the tournament. Well, they want to play offensive basketball. I thought both those shots were not good selections at this time of the game. But they got to get Derek Smith off the starting blocks. He had two flat games so far in the NCAA. UCLA, Louisville, two to nothing. Griffith with a gamble. We played nearly two minutes, and UCLA yet to score. Wiley Brown not going all the way out on Kiki Vandaway. I guess he has seen that Vandaway will put it on the floor and go to the baseline. Sanders helping out. It is a Louisville crowd. No question about the partisan fans here. They're rooting for Louisville. The Cardinals have never been in the final game, although they've been in the final four three of the last nine years. Kiki Vandaway ties it at two. Dick, we've seen that no small man's been able to handle Daryl Griffith in the playoffs, and it's Holton on him. Wiley Brown, not there, rebound underneath. Jerry Eves missed it, and Vandaway rebounds for UCLA. Here comes the lightning quick Foster. Nobody on Holton. He rarely shoots. Rodney McRae, a freshman from New York, rebounded. Both teams taking shots a little early, Al. Here comes the man's first one. Daryl Griffith. Oh. Louisville leads it four to two. Use that one on the board beautifully. Well, he goes in offensive streaks. Making that shot is bad for UCLA. Rod Foster and a foul is on whom? Louisville's McRae, no basket. Foster is so quick, he almost created the foul for himself because he saw his quickness able to hit the defense and then totally off balance. McRae picks up the foul. Larry Brown and his new Suede beige shoes, saddle shoes, not white shoes. He said, I don't trust anyone who wears white shoes in winter. But he's been wearing those beige saddle shoes since the start of the tournament. He says he only will wear them one more game. He doesn't like guys, Al, that put, put ketchup on eggs either, so you're in trouble. Mike Sanders ties it up at four. Griffin, not there. Rebound McRae, inside over Vandaway. Rodney McRae makes it six to four, Louisville. Rodney McRae had a great game Saturday afternoon. He's out of the gate early this time. Holton having trouble, just does control. Can't hit it. Gets his own rebound and he is fouled by home. 43, Derek Smith of Louisville committed the foul. We're going to see a basket down inside. Now, Daryl Griffith that time faded away too much, and it really wasn't there. He put it up long. Now, watch Rodney McRae take it inside. One of the young kids that made our NBC all-freshman team. There's that fadeaway by Griff. Well, see, he likes to play it off the grass. If you notice tonight, just about everything that he makes, he plays off the grass. Rodney McRae's brother, Scooter, a sophomore, injured in the third game of the season. 
sat out the year, so he will join his fellow McRae next year. There'll be a pair of sophomores. This Louisville club brings back an outstanding wealth of talent for next year. Foster can't hit. Griffith has it knocked away by James Wilkes. Wilkes inside, and he fouled a charge against James Wilkes. One dribble too many right there, and Brown did the smart thing waiting on him. He committed, he committed himself to the oh, air too soon. The, the man was in his way. Once he committed, he didn't have to move to charge. The game, Louisville 6, UCLA 4. We played nearly four minutes. You've got to remember, offensively, when the man has the ball, he's the contract to control himself. He's be able to stop on a dime, move up or sideways. A gray high post off to Wiley Brown, a sophomore, not there. What a rebound by McRae and a foul against Sanders of UCLA. Sanders just did miss time that one on the rebound, allowed McRae to go over his back. Normally that would be a foul situation. McRae was smart to keep his hands off Sanders' back. We'll see the play right here. Vanderway altered the shot by Brown. Rebounding. See the ball hit the rim for the second time. Sanders didn't realize it was going to do that. McRae gets another tough inside rebound. Rodney McRae at the line for Louisville. 6-7 from Mount Vernon, New York. Now on the, on the made foul shot, we're going to see Louisville. Here we have another look at it. See the ball hit the second time out. Well, see Rodney McRae, and I said it earlier, but he looks a lot like Wes Ensel. He also can release the ball to start a fast break off a rebound. Same way. Louisville leads by four, the largest early lead of this game. Four minutes and 20 seconds have been played. There's that full court zone press again, trying to force the ball down the right-hand side for some traps. Bolton to Wilkes. And away on the weak side. Sanders open. No one picked him up, and he can't hit. They're giving Sanders the 15-footer. He normally will make that shot. I think they got to get Van away in the offense a little bit. He's only touched it once. A steal and a toss to Foster. He's two points. No, but he'll get two shots. Any time that Rockets has a breakaway, it's two points. Nobody in the world can catch him. Foster is an excellent free throw shooter, hitting 83%, the best of the Bruins. Well, any time it's two points, Al, except that time. Well, he foul. Eve hustled down there, fouled him just in time. There's nobody in college basketball that can catch Rockets on a breakaway. What about West Matthews in Wisconsin? Leslie Matthews in Wisconsin. He's also from Connecticut. <laughs> they grow up fast in Connecticut. You're right. Both Matthews and Foster are from that state. Foster, most unusual free throw style. He makes it eight to five. He gets very close to the 10 count, Dick. When you get the ball in your hands, you must shoot in 10 seconds. Let's see how long it takes. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,009, 1,011. <laughs> and he makes them both. You were right, Coach. He did get two points in the breakaway. And we have a timeout. Nearly five minutes have been played in this 1980 National Collegiate Championship in the score. The Cardinals eight and the Bruins six. Louisville arrived here winning its 25th game in the last 26 beating Iowa. Ronnie Lester of the Iowa Star injured Saturday. UCLA took Purdue 67-62 and in the third place game tonight a final Purdue over Iowa 75-58. Joe Barry Carroll the All-American center of the Boilermakers scored 35 points and set a new six game NCAA scoring record with 158 points. The old mark was Tony Bryce of Penn 142 set last year. Full court pressure again. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, but it's man-to-man -man instead of zone pressure that you see from Louisville. Gary Eves, off by Foster. Griffith draws Holton. What an assignment for the freshman Holton. Sanders tapped it away, but controlled by Eves. This is the first time UCLA in the tournament has met a team that's quick. They were meeting strong teams like Clemson, Old Dominion, uh, Ohio State, and Purdue. It's stolen again, Sanders. His hands all over inside, and he's made three deflections already. UCLA looking for a tying goal. Five and a half minutes gone. Vandaway breaking underneath at the suggestion of Foster. Wilkes can't hit outside. UCLA getting the open outside shot, unable to connect. There's Griffin going inside, rebound for the big cross. He has incredible leaping ability. Here's Griffin. Holton 
doing a pretty good job keeping him away from the ball so far. Knocked away again. Foster made the play. A reminder, we'll be selecting the most valuable player to let track to award $5,000 to the university. For home, our star plays. We'll announce that later in the game. Of course, 8 to 6. Darrell Griffin for the ball. Nice job by Holton defensively again on Griffin. Not yet, Billy. What was happening? The middle was blocked. Let's see when the middle open what happens. Larry Brown across the way in a prayerful pose. Ball batted around and controlled by Louisville. Brown thought it was kicked by the Cardinals. Well, it hit a man's foot, but it was strictly an accidental situation. He didn't go out to try to save it. Good back door. Griffith over Sanders. Tough shot. The All-American Griffith gets Louisville a 10-6 lead. That was a good call, Billy. Griffith has to go without the ball. They're overplaying it. The only way to stop is to play him without the ball. After he gets it, as I said before, we can only pray. What's happening, too, is anytime he goes without the ball down the middle, Wilkes is dropping off McCray to help out. So they're going to have a little double team situation. Foster, Wilkes wide open for yep. 15. He's way off the mark. Sanders rebounds and scores. They're going to give James Wilkes all he can eat from the outside. His outside shooting is suspect. Seven minutes have been played. Louisville with the ball, leading by two. Darrell's really not moving well without the ball so far in this ball game. He's got a pick, but Foster caught up with it. Now it's Griffith over Holton, and a foul on Holton. All right. Little touch foul right there. Larry Brown didn't like that one at all. We're going to see some blocking out. Now, here's a matchup extremely important. You've got a tough, young, strong kid going against an All-American. Look at Wiley Brown box out and do a good job. To be honest with you, Vanderway should have rolled off and been a little more aggressive on the offensive board. Griffith drops it down the bottom of the well. It's 11 to 8, and Griffith now with five points to lead all scores. He had 34 in the victory over Iowa on Saturday. Vanderway rebounds. UCLA trails by three. Holton, the playmaker, doesn't shoot much nor score. I can imagine him being there for three more years. He's like a coach on the court. Tapped away by Wiley Brown. Nice running job by Brown on Vandaway. In fact, I asked Coach Wooden before we were chatting prior to the start of the game. I said, of the four freshmen, which one would have fit into your style? He said, Holton right away. He said, he's such a fine playmaker. Wilkes throws it away. He led UCLA in turnovers this year. His pass went right into the Louisville bench. And Denny Crumbs Cardinals, leading by three, will take it the other way. Well, he got nervous there. The clock was starting to tick away. On an inbound pass, you can only hold the ball five seconds. First substitute is going to come in shortly. UCLA has Cliff Bruitt at the scorer's table. Griffith tried to take Holton inside that time. Eric Smith, and he was fouled. James Wilkes got him. The 1980 NCAA Basketball Championship program is a memento you'll treasure. Exclusive information on the Alex final four, tournament five, records, James plenty of photos Wilkes, and features second, included in this collector's issue. UCLA, Send a check or money order. Four dollars to one. NCAA program, box 1980, Lexington, Kentucky, 40593. Preceding announcement for by the Louisville, NCAA. Animated Larry Brown, 39-year-old graduate of the University of North Carolina and a member of the 1964 U.S. Olympic team. And the assistant coach on this year's Olympic team, if we have one. He feels the play is getting a little bit too rough underneath. And that's why he's trying to, uh, he's working one of the officials, I don't know which one. Derek Smith hits one of the two free throws and Louisville's lead is four with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Threw it with the ball. I think a wise substitution couldn't throw it in the game because they've got to get some offense out of that forward position. Darrell Griffith with a steal. Beautiful pass. Jerry Eve, oh, what a nice. block by Pruitt. And UCLA controls. Cliff Pruitt just into the game. What a move. Vandaway wants it. It should be two. Yeah. 12 to 10. Vandaway has four. Get the ball into the Stars' hands. I also think that Louisville's not getting the ball into Cliff's hands enough. We're going to see Mr. Instant Defense come in for Louisville, a product of this city, Indianapolis. He's returned home, Roger Berkman. Foul on Pruitt. Let's go back and see Pruitt at his defensive finest. 
I said Pruitt was a wise substitution, but from the offensive standpoint, beautiful lead pass to Ezo. Look at him from a defensive standpoint. Another Great freshman. Run. You know, it's unbelievable all these freshmen, Billy. They're so outstanding. Well, we've got two of our freshman All-American playing in this game, Foster and McCray, but uh, we probably had 40 we could have picked. Watch Pruitt drop his head here so he won't bang it against the backboard. Rodney McCray off the high post. Roger Berkman, he has the ball now for the first time for Louisville. And Darren Day can't hit, but McCray rebounds. No basket, no basket is the call. The foul before the shot on Sanders of UCLA. And for the Bruins, their sixth team foul. Louisville has committed only three. This is an incredible rebound. The second time that McCray, now he pushed off just enough to get Vandaway out of the way. Should have been a foul, but he gets by with the second time tonight grabbing a rebound over a man's shoulder. Kenny Crum, his Cardinals lead by two. He went undefeated through the Metro Conference season, 14-0, and, and he's the winningest coach this year, 32 victories, only three defeats. He's the first coach in college basketball to get the 200 wins the quickest. He did it in less than uh, 10 years. He did it in nine and a half years. Faster than McGuire, faster than Wooden, faster than Rupp or Bobby Knight. He didn't play the schedule I played. <laughs> played one more difficult. You know, that's the first time that any team's gone through the Metro undefeated in the course of the year. Showing the balance of UCLA. UCLA. You know, before they were in the Metro, before the 1974-75 season, Louisville was in the Missouri Valley. Then they were independent one year when they went to the Final Four. And then they joined the Metro. Took a little time while they mopped up the floor. And now we're set to go with 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Louisville with the ball in a two-point lead. And UCLA in the zone defense on the out-of-bounds. Just the same thing that Louisville does. Nice pass. Brown can't hit. Daryl Allen's into the game for the first time. Rebounds. He's the biggest Bruin at 6'9". Darren Day, another freshman. It's deflected out-of-bounds by Berkman. Boy, he's in the right place at the right time so often. He has very quick hands. He picks up the tempo defensively. Now watch him get over there with his hand. There he is. He knew where that pass had to go. Really did a great job. That was two points for Vandeweghe if he'd had it inside. Derek yeah. Smith comes out, and Poncho Wright, number 44, another Indianapolis native, is in. So the two uh, Louisville players from this city are now in the game. That was a play by Kirkman. He went over the right-hand shoulder to make that steal because he knew that they want to put it on the floor with his right-hand dribble. He's a smart player. Aaron Day, 6'7", freshman, another freshman, Pruitt. Oh, look at Allen cleaning out house inside. <laughs> Rod Foster, another freshman, connects. And the game is tied at 12 with 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. First half. They're still hearing some of the sounds that Allen put on Joe Barry Carroll's chest the other day in that warfare. Darren Day now is guarding Daryl Griffith. That means Griffith on a taller opponent. Almost stolen. Griffith got away with a push and scores. He never worries on the jump shot. He just goes up to one le le level higher. But what he does now, he has his whole body together in the senior year. He wasn't that good of a shot from the outside his first three years, but he worked on it this summer. Larry's saying he pushed off. Here we see Berkman gets it inside. Good play, good hands by Griffin. Now here's where he's in a bind. He doesn't know really what to do. Yet once he got himself under control, he just went up for the jump. Time out. Nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the first half. The Louisville Cardinals lead the UCLA Bruins for this 1980 National Collegiate Championship, 14 to 12. Here's that last play as Griffith breaks the 12-12 tie. There he is, Dickie, just gets himself under control. Well, can't go left, can't go right, so I go straight up in the air to the ceiling. Makes the turnaround jumper. Well, and it doesn't look bad on that one. Watch on this play, another angle. Now, watch how Griff does give him the elbow. Oh, yeah, he made the foul. There was That's no obvious. question about it. That's what Larry Brown was up and yelling about. You know, Al, you made a good point about him squaring up to the basket. What you're saying there is his shoulders are looking right at it, and so is his head. Therefore, on his turnaround jumper, it's just like a regular jump shot. We're at the midpoint of this first half. Now Griffiths on Foster. UCLA looking for the tie goal. Deflected. He goes right to Pruitt. And a great block by Wiley Brown. Oh, out of bounds. The ball was on the baseline or the player's foot was. Pruitt recocked that time, Billy, and still uh, got it blocked by Brown. Yeah, beautiful play by Wiley Brown. And there's number 34, Berkman again. See him getting his hands on the ball? Watch now watch who gets the ball under the basket again. Berkman. He is in 
incredible. I'm trying to show the reef cock and you're pointing to something else. <laughs> <laughs> UCLA trailing by two, 9.41 left in the first half. Louisville on the out of bound zone defense. Darren Day. Brood stolen by Poncho Wright. The passer was too far away. Darrell Griffith, here he comes. For the prey. Can't hit it. Well, that's the guy, I think, before the game, Coach Woody said, maybe the most gifted of the freshmen, Darren Day. He's very talented. Mr. D.D. Out of bounds to UCLA with nine minutes left in the half. UCLA has not led yet. Darrell goes in there, uses the left hand. Rodney McRae has an easy one and didn't hit it. And then off to the races goes Darren Day. Sanders Beautiful. got away with a foul that time. Back to live action. It's Cliff Pruitt for UCLA. Oh, Van Away off. pushed off. Good call. He did. First foul on Van Away, and that puts Louisville in the bonus. While the Cardinals have committed only three team fouls, Louisville, on the other hand, with UCLA, seven team fouls, will now have the one and one the rest of this first half. It's surprising because Louisville, I feel, is playing a more physical game than UCLA is playing. You know, Al, one of the things that's obvious right away is that Denny Crum had an excellent matchup with Wally Brown on Vanderway. He's been able to keep Vanderway away from the basket, and so far, Vanderway hadn't really been in the offensive flow. There's Griffith sitting down, taking a little rest, and staying out of foul trouble. Sometimes he picks up a few careless ones early. Well, the Cardinals have a tremendous break when they go to their bench. They go to Pancho Wright and Roger Berkman, which almost improves their team. Wright is a great shooter, and Berkman a sensational defensive player. When they ask Pancho Wright to sign an autograph, he signs it, never wrong, Pancho Wright. <laughs> he says he calls this nap time, that nickname for Indianapolis, and glad to be in nap time. Tied at 14, McGray missed the free throw. UCLA looking for its first lead of the game. Eight minutes and 35 seconds left. Forcing the pass was Day. Off to Pruitt from 15. That's the first Bruin lead at 16-14. Line, good move, and a block by Pruitt, and a foul on Pruitt. He didn't think so. Yeah. Second foul on Cliff Pruitt. All right, Jerry, he showed you what kind of athlete he is on this move. He gives a little double pump. Here he comes. Nothing there. Stays up. I thought it was a good block. It was, it was close. He's six foot seven now, Pruitt from Bourbon Day High School. Watch him come up. He might have caught him with the, with the hip or the knee. Uh, that's always the out. Well, he sure didn't catch him with a hand. <laughs> Jerry Eves, two of his brothers play college athletics. His brother Terry, football at Kentucky, and brother Larry, basketball at Ball State. He's only a sophomore, 6'4". Missed them both. Ancho, wait and right, get up there. Knocked out of bounds to Louisville. Well, Poncho Wright showed us that leaping ability that we haven't seen from him so far in the tournament. Poncho Wright's a great ball play. He didn't play last year because he had academic problems. He's only 6'5", but he was above the crowd on that last lead. Derek Smith, one of the sophomores, unable to hit. And the foul is on Berkman of Louisville. The fourth team foul, non-shooting foul. UCLA will play it on the side. You know, when you look over Louisville's stats, Derek Smith's had a fine year, but so far in the NCAA tournament, he just has not been able to get out of the box with that jump shot. Well, the last three games, Billy, his first uh, game or two were okay. UCLA got here, finishing fourth behind Oregon State, Arizona State, and Washington State. No contest in the Metro. Louisville undefeated, and then they rolled through their postseason tournament. Vandaway helping out in backcourt. Now it's two on two. But good hustle by Eves to force the turnover. Looking for the tying basket. Stolen by Foster and a foul on Eves with the knee. It's time to get your star back in, yep. Denny. Second foul on Jerry Eves. There's, that's a bad pass by Smith. Foster just in the right place and there was the call. Fisher right on top of it. How would you describe the tempo, coach? Uh, I think it's uh, too quick. 
be honest with you, for championship game. Oh, here he comes. They couldn't hold him out too much longer. He set out for about two minutes. You got to go in the finals with your with your stars, and this guy belongs out here. I know that rest, that was as much for to keep him out of foul trouble as it was for a rest. UCLA with the ball, leading Louisville 16 to 14. Less than eight minutes remaining in the first half. Darrell Adams off today. Got the baseline, couldn't score, got too far underneath, and Derek Smith rebounds for Louisville. Give Rodney, Rodney credit at that time, he blocked the shot. Smith, he short, not hit him. But Allen's touched it last, Louisville is getting more chances in this game. UCLA so often has had only one shot. Louisville's getting the second and third chance, although they trail by two. Surprisingly, with Derek Smith, he's such a great shooter throughout the whole year. He's a 60% uh, field goal shooter, I believe. And for the last three games, he's just been in a drought. And then it starts in your head, and all of a sudden, it's a big pink elephant in your head. And you just, oh, how can I get a basket? How, how can I get off this snide? That's what he needs is one basket, and he'll be okay. There he is, Smith. He didn't get the basket, but he got the rebound. And now he'll, no, it still won't go in for Derek Smith. And when the guy's not hitting well, he should never take a real difficult shot like that. Rod Foster, UCLA, inside, can't hit. Sanders and Vandaway and rebound Poncho Wright. He is tough on the boards tonight. Darrell Griffith on Darren Day. Uh, good job by Darrell holding everybody back out. Over Tony Anderson. Griffith can't hit. Rebound Foster and a foul on Berkman. Second foul on Berkman. Here we're going to see this is... Out of bounds play, Derek Smith got it. Now that's the kind of shot you want to get him off the ground. You notice how he really didn't come down solid. Super rebound, but look at this shot. Not good shot selection. He had the ball, needed to keep possession. If you notice his arm, he's pulling it back. He's almost praying when he puts it up and it drops in. Next Louisville foul will send UCLA in the bonus. 16-14 Bruins, a low scoring first half. We played over 13 minutes. Tony Anderson just in the game, used sparingly the second half of the year by Larry Brown. Foster just did dish it off to Vandaway, and he hits. UCLA enjoys its biggest lead, 18-14. Vandaway was six. Talk about the quiet All-American. He just relaxed. Put it right up there. Poncho right out to Darrell Griffith. Tony Anderson, the third man to guard Griffith thus far for UCLA. Larry Brown wants to keep a taller man on him who's fresh at all times. Pass to Poncho Wright. Not a good shot again. McRae, another offensive rebound for Louisville. It's 18 to 16. Six points for McRae. He must play good for Louisville to win. And to think his brother's on the sideline, Danny Grum would have never expected to be here with the scooter not available to play. Bad pass by Day, and Berkman comes up with it for Louisville. Darren Day a little too clever with a couple of his passes. And here comes Berkman, and the foul on Berkman for charging his third of the game. And that was a shooting foul for UCLA. One dribble too many. Here you go, Poncho Wright gets up there, has to double, triple pump, McCray in the right place, a little half hook inside, score. He's only 6'7 in height, but he's a lot bigger than that. Well, with that body, when you see these athletes with those big rear ends, that puts him up to 6'10 to 6'11. 1816, UCLA. <laughs> It makes it wider, it doesn't make it taller. Yes, it does, Billy, because they eat up more space on the court and no one will get near them. So you recruited not only for height, but posterior. Well, I, I didn't. I wanted very thin ball players. I, I wanted guys to be quick. I think the name of basketball is to be quick. Foul against Griffith of Louisville, his first. Apparently, the scoreboard was not correct because UCLA did not shoot that last foul. According to our marks, uh, there was... 17 fouls. Now, apparently, this is the seventh team foul against Louisville. Kiki Vandaway, what a story. We told you about it Saturday. Father Ernie Vandaway, All-American at Colgate. Mother, Miss America. Uncle Mel Hutchins, All-American at BYU. Sister Tana on the 1976 Olympic team. You know, he didn't start playing basketball until he was 13 because he was the outstanding swimmer in his age group at 12 years. And then suddenly took a liking to basketball and a lot of folks at UCLA glad he did. 
Well, it reminds me of when I look at him, I think of Dave DeBusha, that played for the University of Detroit and went on to a great pro career. He's the same type of player. He hits a pair of free throws. It's 20 to 16. Five minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half, and there's a timeout. The Bruins of UCLA have a four-point lead. We return to our studios for this message. UCLA, 10 national championships, all under John Wood, 10 in 12 years, and on four of those championship years, 67 through 71, Denny Crum, the Louisville coach, was Wooden's assistant. Larry Brown trying to follow in the footsteps. Gene Bartow and Gary Cunningham were the interim had men after Wooden left, and both felt the pressure. Larry Brown says he doesn't feel the Wooden pressure, that he's glad he's carrying on in the tradition. In fairness to both of those men, though, they had great records at UCLA. It's not like they faded out of the, out of the uh, picture completely in college basketball. That's right, Billy, just because they didn't win the national title. Poncho Wright not there. Mike Sanders rebounds for UCLA. It's a 20-16 game, UCLA in front, 4.50 left. Neither team has shot well. Both teams have defended it well. Look for Louisville next time down the, ball, down the court to get the ball to Daryl Griffin. Larry Brown in the corner of your picture, the head coach of UCLA, studying the action. Cliff Pruitt lobbing to Vandaway, and Griffith blocked it. What a play by Griffith, and Louisville comes back with it. Excellent block. And Griffith sets up Derek Smith to score. Total player, Daryl Griffith, makes the block, leads the fast break, beautiful play. Griffith, outstanding, stealing the ball, passing it. Cliff Pruitt around right, throws it away. So the freshman mistakes now showing for UCLA, and Louisville has a chance to tie. Eames, not there, tipped in. Huncho right. Boy, he's shown a sleeping ability we just have not seen from him. Timeout, Larry Brown, as Denny Crumbs Cardinals has tied it at 20. You know what happens in a game like this? Louisville looks for the knockout punch. When they get a little run like this, they start smelling blood. And immediately, Larry Brown makes a good move and goes to a timeout to block the run to stop it. Basketball is won and run. Whoever can have the longest run usually ends up the victim. Darrell Griffith averaged 23 points a game this year, four assists a game, 85 steals a game to lead his team. Here he is, number 35, Griffith. This is a four-point turnaround here because that's an easy basket for Vandaway. Doesn't get it. Now, instead of him getting two, you see Louisville going the other way. Beautiful lead pass inside of Derek Smith. That might help his confidence, too. Big, big turnaround. Beautiful pass. Hey, look at that camera angle. Right down the pipe. He needed this. That, he had to score his first basket within three feet of the rim. Now he'll give more confidence about around 15 feet. A great call by Larry Brown. You know, Larry Brown's one of the great, from years ago, there was great Jewish ball players in New York City. And Fred Holzman and Sid Tannenbaum and Max Zaslowski, and they governed the game, especially in the backcourt. And when Frank McGuire, because he played with a lot of Jewish ball players, went down to North Carolina, he went to New York City and picked Larry Brown on a Long Beach. And he went down there, and that started the subway from New York City down to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now that ended it. That yeah, ended it? That ended it. Well, because Larry Brown was the last of the New York guys to go. The 57 team were all Catholic kids from New York. Well, that was their mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's tied at 20 with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Intense play, Wiley Brown, and it's out of bounds, touched apparently by Cliff Pruitt. What's happening to UCLA right now? They're having the ball get in the hands of the non-ball handlers trying to make plays. They gotta get back there, probably bring Holton back into the game to settle down their ball handlers. Louisville, down by four, has scored the last four points and now has the opportunity to take the lead. And you see Holton coming into the game, Dick. Larry Brown trying to get the ball handling back. Wiley Brown, blocked by Pruitt and taken away by Pruitt. He's made three outstanding defensive plays, hasn't he? Yeah, he plays with no fear, but the best thing about a freshman is they become a sophomore. Band away, blocked out of bounds by Poncho Wright. Let's go back and see Cliff Pruitt. Where's 34? The same number as David Greenwood, the All-American. Also went to the same high school, Bourbon Day in L.A. Wiley Brown just didn't respect those fellas inside. Beautiful block, took it away, going the other way. You know, with freshmen, you win some games you shouldn't win, and you lose some you should win. 
Aaron Day outside to Foster. So Day, Foster, and Holton, three freshmen are in the game for UCLA, along with the senior Vandaway and the sophomore Sanders. It's the zone defense. Foster from outside, short, and it goes to Wiley Brown. Not a good shot at that time. Darrell Griffin, it's tied at 20. Three count in there. Danny Crump, the head coach of the Cardinals, in the corner of your picture. Good patience by Louisville. Griff got to learn to go without the ball out there. They're overplaying them on the ball side. Here he goes around. I should be all right right now. There it is. Griffin had it taken away by Foster. Quickness against quickness. Here comes Foster. All the way, but he can't score, and he was fouled. What did you Wiley tell Brown. me, Billy? Who's faster than this kid? West can, Matthews. Can we see that again, possibly? <laughs> There's nobody faster than that guy. You know, that would be interesting sometime to get guys in basketball to see who's the fastest end line to end line. Here he goes. Here he goes. <laughs> he goes by everybody. Fine play. Well, when you consider they had in the backcourt to try to solidify the ball handling, Larry Brown puts in three guys that are all fresh. <laughs> Is that unbelievable? The national championship game a year ago, they were trying to win a state championship. At the line, Rod Foster. He is from Connecticut, as we mentioned before. St. Thomas Aquinas High School. High School All-American averaged 30 points a game last year. He was Larry Brown's final recruit. And the, here he is again, end to end. Whoop, there he goes. The only thing that stops this guy is the out of bounds. And Wiley Brown. <laughs> you know these four freshmen, they averaged 106 points between them in their senior year in high school. He hits it coolly, 22-20, UCLA back on top. Just a bit more than two minutes left in a low scoring first half. Griffin, good fake. Oh my, what a play. That was a clear out for Griffith, and we're gonna see more of that now. They're gonna isolate Holton on him. Everybody else down low. Kiki came over and tried to intimidate him, but he just went up over Kiki. Foster all the way. He scores. There's that, there's that slow guy, Billy. <laughs> he saw a crack in the door and boom, he was in the house. I said the other day he runs like a guy, like a balloon when you take the air out. It just flies. He's a Griffin. road runner. Can't hit. Oh, here Two we go. Break away. Let's Foster. see who's going to catch him. Let's see who's going to catch him. Oh. <laughs> Daryl Griffith tried. It's UCLA's turn to cheer. 26-22 with a minute and a half left. Inside. UCLA's Foster tied it up with his feet. That's an illegal play, and it should have been Louisville's ball. Here he goes, coming through the water bug. Nice play. That's a good hesitation dribble, too. I'm changing his name from Rockets to Jetstream. You know, we saw Clint Swan look like Bereshnikov in slow motion. Foster has some of that same mid-air action. Rod, it's Darren Day, 6'7", against McRae, 6'7". And UCLA gains the tap. Tony Anderson. Cliff Pruitt. Pruitt, not there. But Ray is. What a rebound. One minute remaining in the first half. Wide open. Poncho Wright, he's a good shooter. 26 24. Poncho Wright has four points. Poncho Wright will bottom him out every time he's open. There's his own press again. 47 seconds. UCLA, an underdog as they've been almost throughout the entire tournament. Leading by two, we'll see if they go for the final shot. Apparently they will. Well, Holton's a smart player. He pulled the ball back out. Pruitt was getting a little nervous with it. Pruitt, tough shot and a foul on right. Pruitt forced a bad shot. But Dick, gets the foul. Dick Pruitt is a pretty tough guy to handle because he can put the ball on the floor for a guy 6'7", 6'8". He came close to jumping in that time. Yep, here he, he comes. The, he's the 4A player in the inner city in L.A. last year for Day. Looks to me like he jumped in a little bit, Billy. 
Well, Pancho Wright's got his hands full handling, that's for sure. Pruitt has scored two points. He had trouble, as did most of the young Bruins early this year, shooting free throws. They had big leads late in games early and lost them because other teams would foul and they couldn't convert the free throws. But they've been shooting 76% the second half of the year, and any team would take that. Well, he loves the big game. He's a good ball handler, and he uh, doesn't seem to have any fear. He comes out shooting. UCLA has made all seven of its free throws, eight out of eight in the first half, and lead by four points, 25 seconds left in this first 20-minute period. One Griffin. shot, I think David will, I think Griffith will take it. He's asking for him to get down into one four, so he can just have the whole top of the court to himself. There's a little one-on-one, -on -one, folks. Darrell Griffith. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, that's, that's not fair to make that type of a shot. Three seconds. It'll come. No. Oh, a block by McRae. What a sensational end of the first half. Griffith with a long rainbow and McRae with a block. Rodney made a super play on that block shot that time. For the national championship, 1980, we're at halftime. UCLA 28, Louisville 26. Set to go, it'll be the same starting lineups for both teams. Foster, Holton, Wilkes, Sanders, and Vandeweghe for UCLA. McRae, Brown, who gets the tap. Griffin, hold the ball. Smith and Eves. And a block immediately by Rod Foster, three on two, off to Holton, and a foul on McRae of Louisville. Wally Brown stole that second half tip, by that I mean he went up before the ball reached the top. Was able to get it, didn't get called, but Rod Foster again with his quickness was able to make a steal. Holton made a nice play that time, Billy, putting his body between him and the ball for the layup. He created the foul. McRae ended the half with a sensational block, almost got another one. Holton is looking for his first point of the game. And he hits it, UCLA perfect from the line, nine for nine. High above Market Square Arena, over 17,000 fans in here. The, the paid attendance will be around 16,600. There are some 500 members of the press corps. Dick, we saw at the end of the second half, Louisville allowing the other men to go down in a 1-4 offense to allow Griffith to be up in the top isolated. See if they don't go to that sum right here at the start of the second half. Both teams' biggest leads, four points. UCLA, after seeing Louisville come out of the gate and leading by four to the midpoint of the first half, then it was UCLA in command this second 10 minutes of the first half. Jerry Eves with the ball. There's Griffith. Holton on him. Brown deflected it right to his teammate, Eves. Griff has to start going away from the ball. There he goes. That was a nice move he made that time. But it went off his chest and right into the hands of James Wilkes of UCLA. I personally think we don't want to clear out for him. We just let him take the ball at the top of the key and force somebody from UCLA to try to stop it. Wiley Brown deflected it out of bounds. UCLA's James Wilkes will trigger it in. Larry Brown trying to become the first coach ever to win the national championship in his first year in college coaching. Ken Chucker won it in his first year at Cincinnati, but he had coached five years somewhere else. Given Holton the shot, they just go away from him when he has the ball at the top of the key. They won't give it to this guy. Rod Foster is off the mark. Rebound Sanders. Inside to Wilkes. Griffith. They're going to call that traveling, although Griffith seemed to knock it out of his hands. He got a little piece. See that play under the basket. Good pass by Sanders. Wilkes has it. There he is now. Had that ball got away from him completely, it would have been all right, but he kind of caught it. And here's the man Griffith. Sticking with their offense. Just underway in the second half. Louisville with the ball, trailing UCLA by four points. Whistle away from the ball against whom? Foster. He was trying to hang on to Jerry Eves. That's a tough high screen that Wiley Brown and McRae set. They have wide, short sheds if you go by him. You get picked off. Foster, who has played in some foul trouble this year, has committed his first tonight. Louisville goes into a 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds ball. Excuse me, UCLA goes into a 2-3 zone. 
Almost two minutes gone in the second half. Louisville looking for its first points. James Smith. You know, as tough as this zone looks for, use, uh, for Louisville to work against, if UCLA gets much of a working margin, they may try it, even though a man-to-man -man take. Jerry Eves nails a 20-footer, and for Eves, that is his first points of the game. Michael Holton, under pressure. Nice play. Traveling is called against Michael Holton. And Louisville, with a turnover, has a chance to tie. That was almost the same rule interpretation that happened to Wilkes down the other end of the floor. Big basket right here. Louisville fans, some of them on their feet across the way. Holton getting nice position defensively. Wiley Brown, Van away wouldn't leave his feet. Griffith, <laughs> and a foul. Wilkes, how long can Griffith stay up there? He was like a kangaroo that time. He tucked the ball inside his pouch. Then he took it back out again. <laughs> you know, in Eric Siegel's piece that I watched at halftime, he'd go up and put it right through that ring. Here we see Griffin went back door. See Holton turn his back. Now watch it. He just stays right up there. Wilkes, meanwhile, has committed his third foul. He's the top defensive player of the big men for UCLA. And with a chance to tie it up, All-American Daryl Griffin. Dick, they never explained how they voted for the captains on those teams. <laughs> you know, you imagine not trying to be the captain? <laughs> Griffith with 12 points and looking to tie. A new game with 17 minutes, 13 seconds left. Good pressure. And that ball on Griffith. See, after the main foul shots, Louisville put a little bit more pressure on, hoping to get to that run again. As they get to a run again, obviously Larry Brown will call a timeout to stop the run. 42-year-old Denny Crum, his ninth year at the University of Louisville after leaving the UCLA campus, assistant to John Wooden. Holton, Griffith is on Holton. He's a foster. Against Foster of UCLA. So the Bruins have made three straight mistakes with possession. This is just a matter of charge and block ball. Great camera angle. You'll see it. Did he have position? Were his feet planted? And I say they were not. He must have his feet planted. He cannot be moving. I'm so pleased I only got 17 more minutes to go with you. <laughs> Maybe more. It's tied at 30. The gray. Griffith, oh, what a Quick. quickness. Griffith had in trouble, and Foster took it away, but can't control it, can he? He controlled the ball, Rod Foster. be the toughest shot to make on the court. About eight feet away, nobody, no angle, nobody around you. You start measuring it, Billy, rather than just shoot the rhythm. Eves, Wilkes, and Eves took it into Wilkes and scores. 32-32. All four of Eves' points in the second half. Four minutes gone. It's tied at 32. Sanders misses. Rebound McRae at seven in the first half to lead all rebounds. Smith to Brown, great pass. Louisville leads for the first time in the second half. Larry Brown is holding up his arm saying, slow it down, slow it down. Let's start to into a transition game with him. Do you realize in the second half, Kiki Vandewey has hardly touched the ball. They've got to get it to him, son. Foster, not there. Vandewey can't rebound. Four on one. Louisville, four on one. Griffith. Oh my, Darrell Griffith. Larry Brown with a timeout. A fingertip roll he did that time. Darrell Griffith, 15 points. Larry Brown has called timeout. And Louisville stands celebrate a four point lead. A professional called timeout there. Larry Brown's on top of his coaching game tonight.
The 42nd National Collegiate Championship from Indianapolis. Here's some of the action in the last couple of minutes. Gerald Griffith actually lost the ball coming across the top of the key, trying to get it back. Now look at this play by Foster. What quickness. On his knees, gets the ball away. Referee right on top of the call. And there's that pass into Wiley Brown. Beautiful hook pass. Excellent strength by Brown. And then Darrell Griffith came back with a fingertip roll to give Louisville a 36-32 lead. Neither team has shot well, but Louisville over 50% in the second half. Louisville's put extra pressure on him out, trying to get that run going. Five minutes have been played in the second half. Cliff Pruitt comes in for UCLA. And away, fouled by Griffith. Griffith just couldn't get around him as he went for the steal and got him with the body. Dick, that's his second. Now, Darrell Griffith has a habit of picking up those cheap touch fouls, particularly on defense. I'm sure that Denny Crum's telling him about it. That's what sat him down in the LSU game for such a prolonged period of time. 36-32, Vandaway helping out in backcourt. Pruitt says, hey, get away from me, so I can work on my man one-on-one. -on -one. Long pass to Holton. He'll take a shot. He was a good shooter in high school, but his role at UCLA has been as a playmaker, and it's almost as if he'll only shoot when no one else will take it. He's a true athlete. He's a positive type thinker when he's out there. Two-point Cardinal lead. Wiley Brown against Vandaway. Nice play. Wiley Brown, 38-34. Wiley Brown, who had his right thumb amputated when he was three years old, plays with an artificial device and a foul against Brown. His third. You see the device on his right hand. They took a mold of the thumb of the left hand and made an artificial device that serves as his right thumb. There he is going inside. Let me tell you something now you don't know about it. Today, while he was eating lunch, he walked out of the lunchroom and left his thumb on the table. That's they the worst tip up. that waitress ever got. No, no. <laughs> they, they, they put the thumb in the garbage and they had to go get it out so he could play to them. <laughs> Inside to Vandaway. He walked. No basket. He just kept too many little head fakes then that dragged his feet. 38-34, Louisville leads. The Cardinals go the other way. So his, his thumb was in the basket, then what happened? His thumb was on the table. They put it in the garbage, <laughs> and he had to go search it out in order to form the play tonight. You sure the waitress didn't throw it in there because okay, he thought it was a tip? All right, that's enough. 38-34, <laughs> Louisville leads. They have the ball. Six minutes gone in the second half. No team is led by more than four. Louisville has a chance. Traveling Derek Smith. Boy, a big problem down the other end, Dick, for UCLA. They've got to get Kiki Vandaway in the offense. There you see Wiley Brown. They, he had an infection of that right thumb when he was a youngster. They had to amputate at the first joint. He's, he has maybe the best demeanor of any player on the court. Doesn't he have a great feeling for life? There's that plastic wrap that keeps the thumb on. Vandaway inside. And Pruitt blocked. What a play by Derek Smith. Playing superbly, Derek Smith at the other end. And Vandaway with a key rebound for UCLA. Well, there's, on the run. there's some athletes out there, all of them. Boy, they got some quick leapers. That's what's amazing. Mike Sanders can't hit. McCray, leading all rebounders, now has 10. 38-34 Louisville. UCLA has scored only six points the entire second half, and we played nearly seven minutes. Inside, Eves wants the ball out of bounds. UCLA has to Foster's defense, force the turnover. Eves is getting good low inside position. There you go, Vandaway had the jump shot, passed it on inside, Pruitt had it. Another great block, this time by Derek Smith. Well, they're all so quick off their feet out there. When I said earlier, UCLA has been playing their four games or five games against strong teams. They haven't been playing against quick teams. Poncho Wright in the ball game now. Had a good first half. UCLA has not scored in nearly three minutes. Vandaway inside. He was fouled. McRae got him. Rodney McRae, number 22, his third foul. Larry Brown really into the ball game here. There they tried to get Vandaway with the ball in his hands down low. He's got to get in the offense. Larry Brown, that pose we just saw, reminds of a little terrier just fighting, fighting for that final bone. Well, he had a dick. You know, his size in, in basketball was kind of against him. But he, he was always a heady ball player, and he, he gives nothing, and he asks for nothing. 
Vandaway at the line has scored eight points tonight. UCLA has not missed a free throw. Vandaway has two out of his two. That's kept UCLA in the game. It's 38-35. Kiki Vandaway is one of the few All-Americans in basketball ever that I think live at home while they went to college. Vandaway, also an academic All-American. How about Dick McGuire? We didn't have, at that time, we didn't have the dormitories at St. John's. They still don't have dormitories, I don't think, at St. John's. So Inside the Brown. Big Wiley Brown, unable to hit, and Vandaway has a key rebound for the Bruins. Here comes Foster. It just will not fall for a lot of guys inside. Foster scores. It counts, but he fouled. Does it count? Yep, it counts. It's tied at 38. Foster commits his second foul. Great comeback Third by foul. the UCLA kid. Here's Foster on the loose again. Boy, if you don't get him early, you don't get him at all. Ooh. Oh, he took about four steps that time. Unbelievable. Quick. He took a walk on the boardwalk here. Let's count one, two. That's okay. He's up. It's tied at 38. The game was tied six times in the first half. And that's the second time here in the second 20-minute period. Out goes K Kiki Vandaway. He takes a breather. And Darren Day, number 30 in for UCLA. Tied at 38. 12 and a half minutes left in this game. Stolen by Holton. Griffin to beat. And he couldn't beat him, so he wisely held up. Look at Brown on the far sideline, motioning for Holton to get into the offense. High low post, the old UCLA offense right here that Coach Wood made so famous. Threw it down low. Brown indicating with two fingers that's the play he wants. Eves did not have position and picks up the foul. For him, his third foul. So the foul situation now becomes important in that there are several athletes that have three. Wilkes and Foster for UCLA. McRae, Wiley Brown, and Jerry Eves for Louisville. Back comes Vandaway at about a minute and a half blow. And out goes Wilkes. To be honest, I don't think either of the two All-American players have really gone after the ball aggressively on the offensive end of the floor. They really haven't wanted it that much. Watch the, watch the Temple pick up now that Berkman's back in. Berkman has replaced Eves. He has three fouls on him. I was eating away his finger. And away inside to Sanders, and it's Derek Smith who got a piece of his wrist, his second foul. Larry Brown, coach for six and a half years in the pro ranks after playing five years of pro ball, and he led the American Basketball Association three times in five years in assists. He's a playmaking coach, and that's how he sees himself as the leader of these young players. Sanders looking for his seventh. That's the first miss front end of one and one. Meanwhile, UCLA has committed only four fouls, so Louisville will not have the one and one for a moment. There's a lot of time left, 11 and a half minutes. Darrell Griffith, foul on Darren Day, got a piece of him. There's the clear out pick, the first time they used it in the second half. They clear out, let Griffith take his man one on one. As Griffith tries to break the tie, a reminder it's hard to match the excitement of attending an NCAA championship game. Why don't you make your plans now to share in the 1981 NCAA basketball championship, either at a game or in your area or the finals at Philadelphia. For ticket information, write to the NCAA Box 1906, Shawnee Mission, Kansas, 66222. Preceding announcement was furnished by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Griffith unable to hit the front end. He's looking for his 16th point. He's three, four, five from the line. Louisville back in front, 39, 38. 11 and a half minutes left in this 42nd championship. Will it be UCLA with its 11th banner or will Louisville finally win that elusive first? Vandaway, oh, Berkman. Berkman. Looked like a good play, but Berkman has whistled for a foul. 
pretty hard to have a good play from the back like that. That's his fourth foul, which puts him in a very sensitive situation. The call is made by official under the basket. Now watch this play right here. There's Berkman coming across. He had all ball. It was a good play by Berkman, but from the angle of the official, he thought he got him. And now has the fourth foul. Well, the official called this pass, called this foul, was underneath the basket at the time. I think I thought Berkman made a fine block there. Vandaway ties the game at 39. Vandaway really an excellent shooter from a form standpoint. Takes the line solid. He's Good extremely hand. he's extremely sound in all his play. He sure is. UCLA back in front by a point, 40 to 39, as we approach the 11 minute mark. Wiley Brown, a good power move inside over Vandaway. Foul on Vandaway. Excellent pump fake by Wiley Brown. Mr. Brown came to play and they give him the high five handshake. High five. Vandaway gets caught right behind. There's the pump fake. Excellent. It showed him the ball, the head. Came right back inside. There's an excellent move for young kids watching the game. Brown only a sophomore, as is his running mate at four, Derek Smith. Here we go one more time with the head fake, off the glass. Great job, our NBC cameras, Terry Coyle directing them. George Finkel, Kenneth Edmondson, our producer, his executive producer, Don Olmeyer. Brown unable to convert the three-point play. Berkman almost had the steal. It's 41-40 Louisville. Darren Day, Sanders. Wilkes to Foster. Vandaway is on the sidelines now for UCLA. Foster around Griffith to score! The freshman against the All-American. UCLA in front, 42-41. We're approaching the midpoint of the second 20 minutes. Neither team has led by more than four. Inside is Derek Smith, and Louisville is back on top, 43-42, five for Smith. Oh, the defense relaxes just a little bit. These fellows are so quick, they penetrate right on through. Cliff Pruitt for UCLA, and it's 44-43. This is the best run of offense we've seen in the game. I like Cliff Pruitt. The shots there, he takes it. Deflected away by Pruitt, three on one. Oh, for what a play by Berkman, and... Louisville maintains control. Berkman saves a sure basket. Benny Crum doesn't want him fouling out. That's why he saved him here in the second half. He is so valuable as a defensive ace. Uh, they have to get the ball to Griffith right here. Whoop. <laughs> Griffith doesn't score, but Smith does. Oh, you can see that clear out for the alley oop. It was all set. You can't throw that pass if the ball's in the cylinder and touch it. It's a big play that we've seen a lot with Joe Barry Carroll. Of course, Griffin can get up so high. Nine and a half minutes left. Louisville by one. Throw it again. Can't hit it. And it's out of bounds to UCLA. Daryl Griffith nods. Yes, I touched it last. Good call. Larry Brown, you saw him signal to the official. Hey, he's going over the top. Nine minutes, 16 seconds left. Larry Brown's UCLA Bruins trail Denny Crum's Cardinals of Louisville by one. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire, Billy Packer in Indianapolis. It's 45-44 Louisville, nine minutes left in the game. This is said Larry Brown, the head coach of UCLA, a playmaking guard. Yesterday, 23-year-old captain of Niagara University, Phil Scafidi, died after a long, tough fight with cancer. Even while fighting that disease, he returned to the court this year to set a new all-time Niagara University assist record. Our heartfelt sympathies to the family of Phil Scafidi. He died yesterday morning. I was supposed to do a halftime show on him this year, Dick, but I just didn't have the courage. And he, uh, he had more courage than I had, and I, I feel sorry for the family, and my prayers will be for the kid. UCLA with the ball, trailing by one point as the clock winds down to nine minutes. And away off to Sanders and back out to Holton. Louisville has Tony Branch, 23 in the game, as they play a zone. Rod Foster from outside can't hit it. Look at that McCray get up there. He's been a demon on the board. Boy, did he go upstairs that time? His timing is so good, too. Griffith is open. Pumps. And can't hit. Wilkes up high for UCLA. And he had to be up there because McRae was right with him. 
Bolton slows it up. Foster, Sanders. Eight and a half minutes left. UCLA with the ball down by one. Vandaway. He wasn't Eight sure. Short. Wilkes got the rebound and powers it in. James Wilkes, that is his first bucket of the game. That was a big play for UCLA. Kiki Vandaway wasn't quite sure he was going to put that one up. Wiley Brown can't hit. And a foul against whom? Louisville, apparently. No one has raised a hand. The Cardinal I, I, Boutonier and the... Darryl Griffith, I believe. I thought it was on Griff, personally. Now the the and the lapel of Denny Crow. His third. Third foul on Daryl Griffith. Jerry and at the other end goes Mike Sanders of UCLA. I'd like to repeat the story about Sanders because if you talk to all these kids, you know, they love their parents, but they always talk about their moms. And here's a mother of Mike Sanders down in Dorilla, Louisiana tonight. His son wanted to quit UCLA last year. He didn't play very much. He was a high school All-American, a small school down in Louisiana. Mom said, you stay there, you get your education. Well, Larry Brown came along, and Sanders didn't start. Didn't play much first half of this year. Became a starter at midseason when it was 8-6, and six, and has helped lead this team. And Brown has said, most valuable player down the stretch. He has just turned the team around. Well, you know, earlier in the year, I, I had him against Notre Dame, UCLA. I also had him against the Paul. What Larry Brown has done and what these ball players have done have completely turned the program around. It looked to me like they were truly going into a Dunkirk year. They were eight and six in the beginning of January, then all of a sudden off to the races. I, I couldn't uh, congratulate Larry Brown anymore. What's it, happened right here is Wiley Brown has lost his contact lens. They're down there looking at it now. This is a big break for Louisville because during this period of time, Daryl Griffith was on the bench for a rest. He's gonna get an opportunity to get an even longer one here. Therefore, Denny Crum won't have to take him out of the game so much during the playing action time. He has the right, the official has the right to let him get that contact lens back in there. He picked it up off. Wiley Brown working on that contact. He is 6'8 and 220, a sophomore. He was the Georgia Player of the Year in both football and basketball. And he and Derek Smith communicate in pig left. Able aspe, says Smith to uh, Wiley Brown, and that means throw me a law pass. Daryl Griffith says, I don't understand what they're talking about, but they seem to be getting along just fine. At a point of interest, Dick, what position did he play in football? Tight end. Tight end, boy, oh boy. Could he, I bet he could just mow down the whole side of a line with one cross body block. Sanders trying to add to the one point lead. This is a one and one. And he misses. But Wilkes is able to get it back for UCLA. He's come up with a couple of key plays off the board. That was very big because the second time they missed the front end of a one and one. Sanders off the high post. McGray pulled away from the basket. There's the UCLA high low post offense. Inside, Sanders can't save. Out of bounds to Louisville. Here we go. They got in number 23. Tony Branch, he's the guy that beat Kansas State in the overtime. Daryl Griffith is resting on the Louisville bench. They're going to bring him in to give it all he's got down the stretch. If you weren't with us at the top of the show, Daryl Griffith playing, dedicating his effort. Here he comes off the bench now for one of his friends battling a tough fight with a disease. That loss of the contact almost saved a minute worth of playing time on the clock. It was a fortunate uh, loss for uh, Louisville. McRae with a nice move, but can't hit. Vandaway rebounds for UCLA. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left. Foster, he wants it. He's got it. Oh, the road runner. Foster leads UCLA with 16 points. He's so tough to defense because if you try to get him early, he blows on by you, and if you wait to the end, you're in trouble because he can hit it. Louisville calls time. Seven minutes remain. UCLA 48, Louisville 45. <laughs> 48 45 from the West UCLA leading Louisville. Six minutes, 59 seconds remain. Neither team able to draw away from the other. Louisville's biggest lead, four. UCLA's largest advantage, four points. And in this last run, the lead has changed hands seven times 
in three minutes. We'd like to thank the NCAA Executive Director Walter Byers, Tom Bernstadt, David Kaywood, Wayne Duke, the rest of the basketball committee for all their support, and the host school here in Indianapolis, Butler University, the Bulldogs, along with the staff and manager of Market Square Arena. They're going to get in the hands of a living legend from Louisville. Rodney McRae with Wilkes, Smith, and Sanders. Here's Griffith and Holton. Wiley Brown and Vandaway. Brown blocked by Sanders. Loose ball. Brown gets it back and loses it. McRae picks it off. Griffith. Not there and Vandaway. He's done a job in the second half on the board. Long pass to Sanders. Oh, great catch. Great catch and concentration by Sanders. Boy, that was a big play. It gives him a five-point lead with six minutes and 20 seconds to go. Biggest lead of the game by either team. Daryl Griffith is standing around. He needs to move without the ball and clear out for him. Here he goes with Holton. Doing a lot of standing around, and I think it's made Holton even more confident on defense. Well, the intensity in the faces of the athletes. Bob! And oh, yes! You want to catch that oh. one. Foul by Holton. He did everything a human can do to stop the play. Unbelievable. <laughs> Still made it. He got unbelievable inside position with a good pass, he double pumped. Here's the basket down the other end, which the, the pass was the key to this. Well, Sanders I, got carried underneath, then hooked it off the glass. I really think the catch was the key. It was a super lead pass, but watch this catch. That's the kind of ball you've got to look into your hands. Great play. So Griffith on the other end converts the three-point play. It's 50 to 48, UCLA. The All-American came through in the clutch and cut that five-board lead down to two in a hurry. 5.45 left. Hard to imagine UCLA plays with such poise with two freshmen in the backcourt. Louisville's keeping pressure on him, coming out, making the play. All right, Brown using a little clock here. Inside and a foul over the back is McRae of Louisville. And Rodney McRae, that is his fourth foul. And he crows. Yeah, and to try to get his voice heard. Pretty tough over the din of this crowd. Even be heard. Brown has the advantage because the players are nearest him at this juncture. Sanders missed his last two front ends of a one and one. This is the third one coming up now. Very, very important shot, right? Yeah. Right down the middle. And for Sanders, his ninth point of the game. All net did not touch any iron. Short on that one, but he got a kind bounce, and it's 52 to 48. UCLA, five minutes and 20 seconds left. They and they went into the zone, just as I kind of figured, Dick. They get themselves a working margin with time. That takes away the one-on-one -on -one opportunities that Daryl Griffith would normally have. Griffith might try to pop from outside. He probably will, but it takes away that chance for him just to take you one-on-one. -on -one. Inside to McRae. Nice great pass to Brown, but he lost it as it was knocked away by Sanders. Last touch by UCLA. There's where Brown has some problems with a thumb and catching the ball. That's where you notice right. it most. Particularly on that short pass where you have to go quickly after it. McRae and Eves, and then back out to the star Griffith. I think it's a wise move by UCLA to try the zone a little bit. Because you figured Griffin was going to try to take Holton one-on-one. -on -one. Excellent move, but he's going to shoot. And hit! Darrell Griffin, the leading scorer in the game with 21 points. It's 52 to 50 UCLA. I think it's an excellent move too, Billy. But the only problem with it is that Griffin's going to be allowed to take his shot almost uncontested against his own. And away inside to score. 54-50. Holton with the assist. Well, Holton did a great job cutting across the defense. Four and a half minutes left. Vandaway has 14. Deflected by Vandaway. Uh, uh, uh. He missed. Missed the shot. Brown ought to give it up. He's going to lose it in the open court. That was a big play when Vandaway missed it. Yeah, I thought he got away with a walk that time. We're right at four minutes with a four-point spread. Back to the man-to-man. -man. McRae inside. Deflected out of bounds to Louisville. Great quickness by UCLA defensively to help out the teammate there. Denny Crum in his nine years at Louisville has won 20 games or more every year. This is best year 
if he gets number 33 in that victory column, he also takes home a national championship. Louisville using up a lot of clock getting set here. They've got to realize this clock moving down on them. Yeah, Rip. a lot of time, Billy. Such an important shot. They've got to take a good one. Jerry Eves gets it back to Griffith. Griffith showing great patience. Like the orchestra leader with a baton with the ball. Everyone get in place. Let's make the music. Here comes the shot right here. Here it goes. Jerry Eves right there. They double team Griffith. They dished it off to Eves for his sixth point. Both teams excellently coached. This game will not be lost from the bench. Rod Foster. Forced the shot. Out of bounds to Louisville. Oh. oh. Larry Brown says settle down. Has him under control. Both coaches got a lot of timeouts left. There's Van Der Wey right there. What happened? He left the ground so soon he couldn't get all the way on up to the backboard. Griffith looking to tie. Get back. Eves. What's happening to UCLA on defense now? They're, they're so aware of what Daryl Griffith is doing, they're taking their eyes off the other fellas offensively. Boy, that, that was some shot off the glass by Jerry E. He's an honor roll school. It's tied at 54. Two and a half minutes remaining. Boy, Vandaway wants it inside. They ought to get him a chance. Foster, not there. McRae, rebounds. Here comes Louisville, looking for the lead. Now the Vandals do shoot that time. I'm out, UCLA. Louisville has taken the lead at 56-54 with six unanswered points. Well, Griffith is one of those players who had an opportunity to turn professional several times, but he has elected to complete his collegiate career I think uh, that brings, uh, I know yesterday in your press conference, Al McGuire, you commented on that. Well, I think it's about time that the hardship situation has ended. I'm not too sure whether it's the hardship of the kid or the hardship of the pro owner. I think now, because when I, I don't worry about the Griffiths or the, or the superstars like Magic Johnson that go into pro ball and make a lot of money. The kids that I worry about are the ones that are marginal ball players, declare hardship, go to pro ball, don't make it. Then they come out, they can't go back to Scott College. They end up going on the corners. They become a weight on society. And it really is a mortal sin. Now those are the hardship players that have been successful this year in the pro ranks, but we don't have the list of the ones who don't make it. And then where do they go? I think the most tragic situation is that that took place on Skip Wise, a young player from Clemson. Ended up actually serving time in, in, in jail. Uh, really had a rough time when the pro deal did not work out for him. So I think Daryl Griffith set quite an example. This example that uh, Larry Bird set by staying another year. And they certainly didn't hurt themselves with the great years they had in their senior season. Well, that picture is symbolic. The Cardinal is on top, 56-54. Six unanswered points by Louisville to take the lead by two. Larry Brown, Bruins had the ball. Two minutes, 17 seconds left. Now we're on an even number here, so the possibilities for OT are strong. And pressure continues. Louisville unique all season long. They made the opposition play 94 feet. Constant pressure. And part of Louisville's success is they've worn down opponents. Forced mistakes. And there's another. They hit it on the head, Mr. Wunder. Hit Larry trying to tell his club, just relax a little bit, get back down, more pressure up court. 207, 206, 205 left. And timeout now by Louisville. The red and black crowd from Louisville on its feet with 205 remaining in the game. Louisville has a two point advantage. Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Louisville out rebounding UCLA by two and outscoring the Bruins by two. Denny Crum's team has the lead and has the ball with 2.05 remaining. Denny Crum has been there before. Semifinals in 1975. Many felt he had the best team. He led UCLA and only a miracle finish in John Wooden's final two games 
got the Bruins to the national championship as they defeated Louisville in overtime. Now Denny Crum looking for his first national title, and he would get it by beating UCLA. Dickey's got all guards in the ball game with exception of Derek Smith, so look for him to hang on to the ball a little bit. Wiley Brown is out, and he has his best free throw shooter in there, and Tony Branch, he has the ball now. Tony Branch is the only other senior on the team. Jump ball. Now that works against. Let's see if Denny Crum is going to put back his big man for defensive purposes. That's here, what here he's going to do. They'll, they'll come back in there. But he's got Branch jumping center. Here's what happened. Tony Branch has the ball, comes across. Hey, he gets tripped. He gets tripped by Foster. That's why he went down. He's a sure ball handler. He very seldom turns over the ball. I believe, uh, I'm not sure, I don't want to say it, but I, I think someone told me he's only had one turnover in the NCAA this year so far. Well, Branch, who is only six feet tall against the leaping 6'6 Sanders, so UCLA has this advantage. Rodney McRae comes in and Eves goes out, and Wiley Brown in as Denny Crum gets his muscle into the game. Billy, they would have taken out Tony Branch if they could have, but he's jumping. Sanders tips it, and it goes oh, no! out of bounds to Louisville. Wiley Brown again could not get his hands on the ball. Now here come the ball handlers back into the game. Well, here's the play. Wiley Brown all alone. Vandaway did come up with a great play. Just got a little piece of that ball. Look at Look the at agony in Wilkes' Look at face. Wilkes. Now, you know what happened just then? Berkman under the basket coming in for substitution. They ran into each other and he hurt his lip in the substitution. 145 left. Louisville with a ball and a 56-54 lead. Yes. Dick, you remember that, la that last game you were talking about? Remember what happened to Louisville? They had the right, hold the ball, the right man, Terry Howard on the line, and he couldn't hit it. Yeah, but you got to remember this year, which was great coaching against Texas A&M, Denny had him miss a foul on purpose. Grant, he didn't miss a shot all year, but he didn't want the situation to come up again where the kid would have so much pressure on him. Louisville by two. Whoop. A little dangerous. 117 left. Boy, they made Denny Crum called the timeout. There was no indecision on his part at all. It's what he was going to do is sit on this thing and change the lineup. Here's Griffith. And he passed it up. All right, they are now playing against the clock. They are not playing against UCLA. They will not take a shot. That is what you call a complete freeze. When you take a shot, you call that a delay. Final minute. There it is. Louisville with a lead. It is right. seesawed throughout the contest. And now Louisville at the line with a chance to give itself more than that two-point advantage. Danny Crum is saying intentional foul. It's an intentional foul. He's looking for the two-shot foul. He did not get it. They got the one-to-one, -one, which I said many times this year, the great college season. He's planting the seed, so the next call will be a two-shot foul intentional rather than the one-to-one. -one. Uh, it'll only be intentional if they don't go for the ball. That clock above has become the focal point of both benches. And a reminder, following basketball, stay tuned for local news, followed by The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson over most of these NBC stations. On the West Coast and most Mountain Time Zone stations, these programs will be seen at their regular time. The reason we might have an overtime, if the, if the fans out there will remember, if it's 2, 4, 6, 8, you're on an even number. If it breaks into an odd number, you very rarely go into an overtime. Let's say that uh, he makes one foul shot here and misses the next. Then it's, the odds are against going into an overtime. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. opportunity, Derek Smith, a two-point Louisville lead, one and one for the sophomore. Oh. And he did not he, put that one up good. That was too I know flat. He, he really had a hard time getting that one out of his hand. <laughs> he really did. Now we can feel it sitting right here and said, that's how you were playing this afternoon. Oh. I had you down. <laughs> but now, now he's quite confident now. I think now you'll see it get higher. I don't know if it'll go in. But the ball have a higher trajectory this time. a four-point lead with 52 seconds left. Oh, it's a steal. Derek Smith stole the ball. And they're going crazy in the Louisville section. Bad pass. Oh, bad man pass. threw it away. Terrible. 45 seconds left. There's a lot of time left. There is. I was really surprised that Berkman did that. Nobody came to the ball. Everybody stood so far away from him. Now, the only thing Louisville's saying to themselves now, no three-point play. 
UCLA doesn't have that much time. They've got to get the ball up there. Well, Lou will go right into his zone, a one-two-two two zone here. Make the shoot from the outside. There it is. And it's not made. Berkman. Griffith. McRae. Berkman ought to get rid of the ball so he doesn't get fouled. You just want to beat the clock here. The River City of Kentucky is going bananas. He makes the first foul. I said earlier, he timed the close to him, looks and pick him up, masses over. Look at that man, look at him. Very intent. You know, Dick, I, I really enjoyed your interview with him earlier, but even more than that, and I wish the fans at home could have seen the things that he was saying before we came on the air. I mean, all the basketball knowledge that he's got going, and there's the young fellow that's gonna follow in his footsteps. John Wooden, even though Denny Crum was his assistant, John Wooden, the Hoosier, is a UCLA man. And when he refers to the Bruins in the Final Four, he uses personal expressions, we, us. I worked with him on television the first time that he was going to be a, a broadcaster with us. And he said, well, we should have hung on to the ball a little better than that. <laughs> and I kept grabbing him by the arm. I said, come on, coach. On the other hand, as much as he wants UCLA to win and Larry Brown's success, it's a kind of a special place for Wooden to be because Denny Crum is a man who has borrowed the Wooden style and taken it to Louisville. And it appears that Crum, his former assistant, will now have his national title. There's McCray going in. He had to be very careful not to hang on that rim. Wouldn't that have been some kind of call? Well, Louisville's very close to the checkered flag. Assistant coach Bill Olson, Jerry Jones, Wade Houston. They're the men behind Crum. They deserve the credit as well. Victory Lane. And for Larry Brown, he took the horse a lot farther than it was ever expected to ride. He's a credit to college basketball. At the line, Rodney McRae. Was he dominating on the boards? Uh, only a freshman. So smooth. There goes Mount Vernon, New York. They wake up. He's from the high school up there. And a more high five. <laughs> this is encore time. Yeah. Out. Look at his brother over there on the bench. He's got to be so proud of him. And Brown gets the rebound. It goes to Pruitt. Time running out, 10 seconds. Throw it all away. Tough shot. Tough shot. Foster battling it out of bounds to Louisville. Four seconds remain. Denny Crum at age 42 will be the coach of the national champions in 1980. Larry Brown fighting like that terrier down to that final second. Griffith fouled by Vandaway. Now your two shot foul. Two seconds left. Oh, he's going to call one and one. But it's rather convenient in one manner, dramatically, that Griffiths should get a chance to go to the other end. All yep. 17,000 focus on a great All-American. Yep. And at this point, it would be nice for him to add a little frosting. Yep. In the middle of it all, he, I'm real pleased that he, you know, I heard him speak the other day. He says, I have a friend of mine that's in the third quarter. I want to win this game for him. And that's what he said today at the top of our show. And he's dedicated this game, his last collegiate game, to his friend fighting cancer. And now has a chance to add another salute. College basketball, just out of sight. I'm real pleased to be part of it. I, I enjoyed working with you again, Dick. And Billy, you got a little better this year. I'll be glad to get away <laughs> from you for seven months. And there's months. the most valuable player, Daryl Griffith. $5,000 to the University of Louisville in his name from Gillette Track 2. It's all over. Louisville, national champions, 1980. <laughs> Daryl 
Griffith led Louisville with 23 points. Rod Foster, 16. Kiki Vandaway, 14 for UCLA. The 42nd yeah. National Championship. The trophy and the banners go to the University of Louisville. The final score, 59-54. All right, congratulations to the University of Louisville. They've defeated UCLA in a dramatic, exciting final game of this collegiate basketball year. The winning coach is Denny Crum, and with him is Brian Gumbel. Denny, what's all the excitement? Just another day at the office. Uh, not exactly <laughs> another day. It's uh, it's a day of history, uh, Brian. We, we we struggled all day, and I don't, we still won it. When it, the going got tough, we just hung in there, and I don't know how it happened, but it did. You finally climbed the mountaintop. I've got to ask you, you know, you got up by four with only a couple of seconds left in the ball game did your mind drift back to 75 when in the semifinals you had ucla by four and it got away from you and that it did I, the only thing i didn't want to do that time was to panic and I, I thought the kids held their poise we hit some key free throws and, but you can't live in the past it was our turn this time number 35 right here D come here congratulations Steve. thanks a lot man what I wanted since I came here. It's not a bad way to finish your career. Not at all. Not at all. I know you're very happy for your friend, Mr. Stringer. Hey, the team just didn't give up at halftime. You know, we went there and we said, hey, we worked all year for this. We can't give up. We got to dig inside. Daryl, it looked like in the first half particularly, they were cutting you off when you tried to cut underneath. That They were doing a good job of getting some weak side help on you. Yeah, they, they sagged real well uh, the first half. Uh, you know, it caused a little problems. But, hey, we got all the options we went to and scored off that. Did you feel towards the end of the game, particularly when UCLA went ahead by four, that, hey, I'm the star of this team, I'm a senior, I've got to take charge? Hey, I felt I had to take charge at the end of the game, but I didn't, you know, want to force things, so I just took it under control. When the open man was open, I gave him the ball, and I just tried to hit the shot that I had to hit. Let me turn back to your coach for a second. Denny, UCLA is very much a part of your past, but you've been removed from it for nine years. Any special significance to beating UCLA? Well, they've already, they had beaten us twice before, Brian, in the semifinals, and once in the first round, and... Uh, I, I guess probably because of that it means more to it's not a revenge thing because I love UCLA it's just a question of you know we just wanted it and, and sometimes things work out for you sometimes they don't I thought we were going to win at 74-5 I thought we had the best team but we didn't win and UCLA did what they had to do at the end but this time it was our turn gentlemen it's been an amazing night Denny Crum congratulations Thank again you, buddy Daryl Griffith not a bad college career good luck let's go back to Dick Dick Brian, I thought Denny Crum's comment was most significant. He says, you can't live in the past. It was our turn this year. Denny Crum's Cardinals indeed are the 1980 National Collegiate Basketball Champions with a 59-54 victory. Brian? Hey, Dick, the executive producer of NBC's National Collegiate Basketball Championship is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer, George Finkel. Today's telecast was produced by George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle. Our feature producer, Don McGuire. Second producer, Kenneth Edmondson. Technical director, Bill Toby. Associate producer, Peter Rolfe. Associate director, Randy Wines. Next Saturday and Sunday, it's LPGA action with the top women golfers of the Kemper Open. And then Sports World Sunday features the Charlotte 300 Auto Race, women's powerlifting, and the Grand National Steeplechase. Now, following local news, stay tuned for The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson over most of these NBC stations. On the West Coast and most mountain time zone stations, these programs will be seen at the regular time. It's been a brilliant night. Louisville has captured the NCAA title, beating UCLA 59-54. For Dick Genberg, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire, I'm Brian Gumbel saying thanks very much for joining us. Good night. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United serves more of this land than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, network of the 1980 Olympics. We're proud to bring you the best in sports television.